before I begin, I need to share something with you. I know this opinion won't be popular because the show has many fans, but those that know better must do better. I'm asking you to watch this whole video with an open mind, especially if you're a fan of the show. As a race, we need to begin holding Hollywood and its gatekeepers who hold a different set of expectations for their community accountable. We can still have good, creative, groundbreaking shows with clever writing, but we need to do this with our best interests at hand. P-Valley, one of the worst black shows on TV. Black people should be outraged this show was ever written and aired. Just when you think Hollywood can't disrespect black people any worse, it never disappoints. What do I mean? Let's start with the low-hanging fruit first. The show takes place at a strip club and the main characters, well, are strippers. First, let me share something with you. What people don't know is Hollywood now has two time periods. One is the pre-black President Obama era. The other is the post-Obama era. Why do I call it that? Well, prior to the Obamas being elected, the gatekeepers allowed us some shows that provided hope and highlighted the best of black people. I guess the thought was, the chances of black people ever uniting, succeeding, and gaining any kind of power in this country was slim to none. So in their minds, they allowed us the false hope. But then it happened, son of a Someone had the audacity of hope. One of us got free, slipped through the ranks, and made it all the way to the top and became president. You should have seen the fear that set in. What if all the black men in this country actually started having dreams? What if all the black women in this country started to feel worthy? And just like that, everything we watch, read, and listen to change. We entered the post-Obama era P-Valley is a post-Obama show. Let's think back to a time when black women on TV were lawyers, principals, designers, authors, sports agents, and business owners. Now, black women are nothing but ignorant reality TV stars, promiscuous drug dealers, loose hip hop chicks, and strippers. They will have us believe that Michelle Obama was quite the anomaly as they feed us with their image of who black women are. But in fact, black, educated, sophisticated, classy, working moms and wives happens every day in the black world. Also, what we have come to learn in this post-black president era is that this country cares about two types of black deaths and two types of black deaths only. And that's the deaths of a black trans and the murder of black men at the hands and only at the hands of the police. In this country, those happen to be the only black lives that matter. For the last three years, on all the left-wing media outlets, they have been devoting segment after segment to the mistreatment, discrimination, and murder of black trans. In addition, Black trans have been making their way on all the new black TV shows as main characters with very strong storylines. These last three years, the black trans community has had their voices heard. These 32 murders have now been labeled an epidemic. Murder is always a horrible thing. Black murder is the worst. And we love our black trans. With that being said, you know what's worse than 32 black trans murders? 55%. Black men make up 55% of all homicides in this country. Let me repeat that. Black men make up over half of everyone murdered in this country. At what point are we going to see the news dedicating segments to saving black men's lives? At what point 
Does 55% of all homicides in this country equal an epidemic? P. Valley starts a black transsexual named Uncle Cliff, who runs a nightclub called Pink. Uncle Cliff is in love with a gangster rapper name, and I'm shaking my head as I'm saying this. His name is Lil Murder. Remember, this is the post-Obama era of programming. Lil Murder, obviously in fear of harming his rap career, is on the down low about his sexuality. There's three other strippers with stories of making it big from this strip club. One is sleeping with different black married men for money. The other is running from a violent black man of her past. And the last one is with the white man who really doesn't seem to like black people. In this world that Hollywood has created for and about black people, none of the black heterosexuals are good. All the husbands are cheaters, some even violent. None of these women are in love or even looking for love with black men. For these sisters, black men are simply a means to an end. For the first six episodes, the only true love and sex we see is between Uncle Cliff and Lil Murder. And their sex scenes are rather graphic, I might add. Finally, all the way to episode seven, we get to view our first heterosexual sex scene. That's right, it took seven episodes. In this scene, one of the cheating husbands screws his wife on top of a table, quickly wipes his private off and walks away, leaving her feeling empty. So for seven episodes, we get to see true love and tenderness with the gay couple. And when we finally get to see a black married heterosexual couple, they are totally disconnected. Like all of our shows in this post Obama era of programming, the rest of the season, the black men are violent, the black women can't be trusted, and none of these people have any redeeming qualities. In fact, the only person we really care about is Uncle Cliff, the black transsexual. Sound familiar? I was pretty much done with this show, and then people started saying how good the second season was, so I started watching it again. The true motivation behind this show became rather apparent during the second episode. They reduced two of the main strippers to smaller roles and pushed the third stripper to a lesbian relationship with very graphic sex scenes. They elevated Lil Murder into the main character that carries the show and added another thug gangster as his love interest. These two have some of the most pornographic sex ever seen on television, complete with a step-by-step -step showing of how two big, black, masculine gangsters can lube up and mount each other. I had never seen anything like this in my life. And a couple of episodes later, promiscuous little murder and Uncle Cliff also engage in a very obscene sex scene where they dangerously shun using a condom. I should have stopped watching this show after that. I would have been better off, but no. I stayed for another episode. To my detriment, we see Lil Murder live up to his moniker as he goes after his rival for telling an obvious lie on social media. Lil Murder shoots and kills another black man in cold blood like it was absolutely nothing. Why is this one of the worst shows on TV? I'll tell you why. One thing we do know is in most countries, governments control the art, the news, the media, and even the social media. The government can make you empathize with an issue or sympathize with the cause. The government can also demonize and vilify a group of people. Our country has an ugly history of separating the black family. And in this post-Obama era of programming, once again, traditional black families are under attack. It also means a continued perpetuation of black hate and disunity. The only married black couple on this whole show were cheaters, both the man and the woman. Every single black character on this show is foul. Well, except the black trans. As I mentioned earlier, the government has picked and chose what life matters. So much care and consideration has gone into protecting the life and the character of black trans. Where as usual, 
the life and image of straight black men are meaningless. In a time where every other race has seen their HIV numbers under control, a black bisexual and gay black men's numbers are spiraling out of control, and black men are by far the most affected racial or ethnic group with a lifetime HIV risk. In fact, if current HIV diagnosis rates persist, about one in two black men who have sex with other men will be diagnosed with HIV during their lifetime. You heard that right. One in two gay or bisexual black men will be diagnosed with HIV. And because of down low bisexual black men, HIV affects African-American heterosexual women more than women of any other race. We really need to have a conversation about the safety of our black women too. But they don't want to have that. They would rather produce shows promoting down low gay black men having sex without condoms. If this is a new direction in TV with all the shows having trans and gay men not using condoms, then let's do it. But clearly, there's an agenda for black people and black people only because we have yet to see this irresponsible bull on the white shows. And furthermore, why so graphic? Even on Brokeback Mountain, one of the few mainstream white shows that tackled homosexuality with white men, they never showed the two white men actually have sex. Everything was inferred. It was gentle. It was subtle. It was more about the love story and journey of two white men trying to be together. There was very little emphasis on the actual sex act itself. But P-Valley was purposely written to take place at a strip club and gather up all the straight black men viewers it could to show us how a tough black masculine gangsters can lube up and mount each other without using condoms. Black men, see how easy this is? You can do this too. And let me make mention I read in an interview where the creator of the show said all the episodes were directed by women because she couldn't find a man capable of the vision they needed. Let that sink in. I know someone will accuse me of being homophobic, but I'm not. What I am is a person that asks for the same set of standards for black men on television as the other races get. We would never see such a graphic sex scene with a white woman being turned over and a man, especially a black man, lubing up and mounting her for her enjoyment. Viewers would be outraged. There would be letters, phone calls, and the media would destroy that show. Clearly, their goal is programming because these scenes don't need to be this graphic to make a point. The entertainment industry grants every other race a measure of consideration when it comes to their imagery. But when it comes to black people, there's no rules, no boundaries, no respect. And what black people need to understand is there's always a motivation for everything you see. Today, the rappers are getting record deals to tell black folks what different drugs to experiment with. And while we're high with cloudy judgment, Black TV producers have been hired to show us who to have sex with and without using condoms. And unfortunately, black music and black TV is like nobody else's, period. And since we're finally talking about the life and safety of black men, how irresponsible is it to name your main character, the protagonist that we're supposed to like, Lil Murder? Every day, black men, especially rappers, are on one of the many social media apps threatening each other. Rappers are getting murdered weekly, and rap crews are being federally indicted for multiple shootings and homicides. We see video after video of our black men dying in these streets. Just today, a news report came out stating Chicago, better known as Chirac, is on track to break another record for homicides. This is a pandemic. Do we really need a show that creates a fictional gangster rapper that kills other black men in cold blood for frivolous reasons? I made it to the season finale. 
and this little murder character takes the stage and gives the performance of a lifetime. The actor playing this guy is a heck of an actor. He's very talented, and you feel him as a performer. I mean, this dude is pretty captivating. As much as I knew this wasn't good for me to watch, I couldn't turn away. I found myself rooting for him, not only as an actor, but his character, Lil Murder, which is again, both a gift and a curse. Because the song he's performing is a braggadocious song about how easily it was for him to kill another black man and feel no remorse. It's telling a generation of young people how simple you can take the life of another black person who looks just like you and simply go about your day, or worse, feel good about it. Usually, at the end of a season finale, the protagonist, who might have made some mistakes throughout his journey, begins to right his wrongs, so the viewers still like him. But the culture that has been engineered for us guides us to now root for the murderers. Real life murderers are now the stars of our culture today. Think about it. How many rappers in real life have gotten the most clout when rumors began circulating that they were real life murderers? If Lil Murder bragged about killing a man of any other race on this show, he would have ended the season as an evil antagonist. But since the life he took was black and black men's lives have very little value that moment was used to propel him to superstardom, not only for his character on the show, but as an actor in real life. He would never, never be able to rhyme putting seven pounds of pressure on the US government or putting seven pounds of pressure on the hundreds of white supremacists, terrorist organizations that have formed since our last two presidential administrations. Black men are at war with the government, with the police, and with white supremacists. But we only got seven pounds of pressure for each other. There would never be a show created where the main character is a good guy, but goes around killing trans just because, or killing Jewish people just because, or killing white women just because. So why are we glorifying the killing of other black men? Just because. I'll tell you why. Because the only black lives that matter are black trans and black men murdered by the police. If I died tomorrow at the hands of another black man, nobody would care. We need a boycott of black stars too. That channel has done nothing but promote black drug selling, black murder, black promiscuity and black hate. Anytime Hollywood puts black in front of something, it's cold for white people stay away from this garbage. This is red meat propaganda, strictly to keep the Negroes in bondage. Black people, it's time we unite. In this post Obama era of programming, the agenda is to promote black hate and black irresponsibility, pushing us further and further away from each other and closer and closer to death. And black men, while we're killing each other in large numbers and going to prison for decades, leaving our kids without fathers, the government has a plan for your offspring. Every other race in this country is growing fast, but us. It's time for a black revolution. Love Supreme.